This is an interview of Dr. Yoichiro Tanaka centered about the commercialization of the first perpendicular magnetic recording hard disk drive by Toshiba. One of the most significant recent technology developments was the commercialization of perpendicular magnetic recording. Starting in 2005, perpendicular magnetic recording significantly facilitated a tenfold increase of data capacity in hard disk drives. Capacities of up to 10 terabytes are the norm today. This breakthrough was made possible by use of a unique perpendicular magnetic recording medium known as the oxide medium which was first developed in Toshiba under the leadership of Dr. Yoichiro Tanaka. Dr. Tanaka's team also integrated this oxide medium into the industry's first perpendicular magnetic recording hard disk drive. This oral history records Dr. Tanaka's contributions to these successes. Yoichiro, could you start by giving us your name, a little bit about your background, your name, where were you born, uh, where did you grow up? Hi, right, this, uh, this is Yoichiro Tanaka. My name is Yoichiro Tanaka. I, I was born in a city of Yamagata, the northern part of Japan, and grew up in the same city until 18. I joined Tohoku University in uh, 1977 and my <clears throat> major was the electrical communication. I, I graduated at the Hoku University in 1981 and continued to get into the graduate school. Uh, which companies have you worked for and uh, can you give us a sense of your responsibilities and functions at those companies? Mm -hmm. I joined Toshiba Corporation uh, in 1983, shortly after I finished the master's thesis in Tohoku University. And uh, since then, I focused on the research of high-density recording, uh, high-density magnetic recording, uh, include uh, GMR sensors, especially um, perpendicular recording technology and its integration into hard disk drive system. So I have been leading the technology of high density recording for long years and finally completed the integration and commercialization of PMR drives. And the other uh, responsibility I had was uh, development of the hybrid drive and architecture uh, in the Silicon Valley uh, with a team uh, in Toshiba, America. And recent uh, responsibilities are leading the advanced storage system architecture design and the research, uh, especially for medical science data center applications. Is this focus on, storage, on system architecture and medical applications your most current uh, responsibility? Oh, yes. This is my uh, current responsibility. Very good. Uh, could you share with us who uh, and what were your early influences both at college and at work mm -hmm. on the decisions you made uh, about research. And my early research experience, uh, Professor Iwasaki, uh, who was the inventor of PMR, and also he was an advisor uh, in my college days. Uh, so he was uh, the you know, biggest influence to me uh, to direct my uh, research career throughout my life. Uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, your formal title, or at least one of your titles in Toshiba is Senior Fellow, is that correct? 
Yeah, I'm a senior fellow of the Toshiba Corporation right now. Very good. I'd like to move uh, uh, with some questions about the commercialization of PMR. Uh, when did you first become interested in magnetic recording? Um, well, when I was so small, when I was a small kid, I was very interested in uh, radio communication and antenna. That was the great reason for me to uh, join Tohoku University where the uh, big invention of an antenna was made. And I found that antenna is a radio communication as antenna is a very linear, linear system and with the Maxwell equation can make a design. And I found that magnetic recording is also part of the communication system with a very complicated nonlinear system. And how I found the plenty of potentials possibilities of the recording uh, in the future. So I switch from my, you know, switch, uh, my interest uh, redirected to the magnetic recording uh, when I was uh, fourth year after graduate school and joined Iwasaki's laboratory. I'm glad you did that because <laughs> <laughs> we then benefited from your contributions uh, to magnetic recording. Uh, did you uh, pursue uh, your PhD studies on a full-time basis? No, uh, I continued to work in Toshiba um, as a manager at the time. That was in 2005. I, uh, you know, I became the part-time student and graduate of school or to change the PhD. But I was, I was a Toshiba employee as well. So that was uh, kind of interesting but challenging time for me. I completed entire research of the new practical advanced PMO system at the time. And I came up with the idea, I should describe and write down the thesis to record all my knowledge and the findings for the people who will work for the future uh, storage system and sciences. That one year period uh, during which you did your PhD was between 2005 and 2006? Right. Uh, was Professor Iwasaki your thesis advisor for the PhD, or did someone else advise you for the PhD thesis? And no, Professor Iwasaki was not my uh, advisor of PhD thesis, but uh, Professor uh, Muraoka in Tohoku University was my uh, advisor of the PhD thesis. Uh, Professor Iwasaki was uh, my advisor for a bachelor's degree and a master's degree in thesis. During your first uh, stint at Tohoku? Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when did you start uh, to study the subject of perpendicular magnetic recording? I started to study PMR, uh, perpendicular recording, uh, just after when I joined Iwasaki's laboratory as a student in fourth grade uh, the university, undergrad uh, school. So that was the uh, beginning of my career, uh, academic research on PMR. That was in 1980, right? It was 1980. That was uh, three years after the big invention of PMR. Yes. So that was an exciting time for all of us you know, people in Iwasaki's laboratory very hot, 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 hot time for them. Can you describe uh, or summarize the factors that make a perpendicular magnetic recording superior to longitudinal magnetic recording? 
Uh, there, there are two uh, important points uh, that brings PMR is much superior than LMR. So one is a minimum energy state structure. So in magnetics, uh, adjacent magnetics uh, aligned in a different direction of each other. There was a minimum energy state. That is a fundamental uh, structure to make the magnetic recording, perpendicular magnetic recording very stable. And that brings uh, many other advantages in the PMR. So the second is uh, the right structure compared to LMR with a ring shaped gap, the PMR media is placed right underneath the single pole head and pinched by the another high permeable underlayer underneath the media. So the media is right in the middle of the flux path. So that brings another advantage of PMR. So those two are fundamental advantages uh, in my thinking. What led you to focus on investigating the medium itself, you know, the, mm -hmm. the PMR medium? Mm -hmm. um, in the very early days of PMR research, uh, Dr. Ouchi, uh, who is a co-researcher, Professor Iwasaki, invented uh, cobalt chromium perpendicular oriented media. So we thought that was a it's kind of perfect uh, media in terms of uh, alignment, uh, perpendicular orientation. But we thought it was perfect too. And but in testing we have something funny, something uh, unusual uh, characteristics of the media. That was demagnetization in the right process. Somehow, the written magnetization is destroyed by the tail effect of the right head. And even the popping gear recording itself has to be very stable at high density recording. But I found something is missing in that structure. Then we come back to the media and thought what media should be in terms of magnetic structure and the magnetic properties. That is a big reason we focused on the media of the perpendicular recording. I just, want you, I, I just want to let you know that I can hear the page turns, which is fine, but when you're talking, try not to, to move the paper because I can actually hear in the microphone. Okay, so that's very sensitive. Can. All right, got it. Thanks. The, uh, as I recall, one of the key conclusions you reached from that investigation was that uh, you needed a much larger nucleation field. Uh, was critical to solve that problem, right? Right. Nucleation field is, I would say, is a big margin of the media to resist against any disturbing field. Thermal relaxation and of course demagnetization and after effect of the right head. So for those disturbing field, nucleation field help the perpendicular magnetization in the media and even in very severe conditions. So that is a must to have for perpendicular recording media, and that is the principle what we have found. Which media candidates did you study, and which one did you finally select? Mm -hmm. uh, we have a very large, you know, uh, candidate 
after PMO media in, in our history. We started with cobalt chromium, uh, which was a standard in the early days. And we challenged uh, tonaloy alloy, cobalt chromium, tantalum, cobalt chromium, something. And, but at the same time, uh, we worked on the longitudinal media, which should have the large anisotropy energy. So cobalt platinum was the base at the time. So we, we worked on cobalt platinum uh, as well as cobalt chromium. But in order to make the grain structure of the cobalt platinum, we of, of course tried chromium and other metal materials. But oxygen, the adding oxygen or oxide material was very interesting, interestingly to form the grain uh, structure, very fine grain structure and uniform grain structure. That was the uh, uh, fundamental idea we had to bring the cobalt platinum base oxide grain boundary structure uh, for the uh, future PMR, draw, PMR media. Who were your principal co-researchers uh, at Toshiba? Uh, in Toshiba, uh, Dr. Hikosaka, Takashi Hikosaka uh, was a leader of the media development. And Tomoko Taguchi, she is uh, also a leader in recording physics. So two uh, co-researchers did a great job. And so we have a complete team, uh, three of us. It's a core of the team. In addition to those people, so we had uh, Dr. Oikawa, uh, he's a media expert, and Dr. Another Storm Tanaka, another Tanaka, and Storm Tanaka, uh, he led the development of the media, and Kotaru Yamamoto, uh, he's a, a very good design engineer for the drives. So those are the fundamental uh, PMO team in Toshiba. And how, how large was the overall group? Uh, uh, that was n not big. It's about a five, six people and plus. So those are, the team is core of it. And I had a question here about what led you to focus on cobalt, platinum, chrome oxide, but I think you've already answered it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, do you remember meeting with Tom Yamashita, myself, and others at Comag in the early 2000s? Uh, yes, I remember. Uh, we gave the presentation in academic conference is about our cobalt platinum chrome oxide media and its principles uh, concept, and I think we introduced uh, that technology uh, for open discussions. I remember that. Uh, I, I ask this question because uh, uh, that meeting, you in that meeting strongly influenced COMAG's mm -hmm. direction in uh, PMR media development and shortly after that meeting uh, COMAG duplicated your oxide medium and we also saw, COMAG saw the large uh, the properties that attracted you uh, to go on to the oxide medium. Oh, good. So you, again, proof of a concept. Right, <laughs> right. Uh, what were the top reasons uh, for you to switch to PMR from LMR to PMR when you actually did it? What were the key reasons for doing that? Um, I worked on LMR. I studied LMR as well um, when I was in University of Minnesota. That was the topics, how, what would be the limit of LMR. And I have, I have an idea that LMR is moving toward the limit of physics of magnetics. Definitely there was the direction for LMR. Right? In contrast to LMR, the PMR lived 
align with aligning with the physics well higher the aerial density more stable of the magnetization so those are very good for high density recording and the nature is helping PMR to go farther so that was the big findings we had to make a decision switch from LMR to PMR. Uh, the, the work you, you mentioned, you did some of the work on the limits of LMR at, uh, in Minnesota. Uh, were you at the University of Minnesota? And uh, can you tell us when that happened and uh, who you were, uh, which group you were collaborating with? Oh yeah, I worked for Jack Judy, Professor Jack Judy, and my thesis, my my uh, topics was to uh, analyze the zigzag noise of the plated media and how the noise is created, and we characterize uh, in reading uh, the noise structure uh, with the heads. So those are my topics, and found some limitations. And where was, uh, when, when were you at the University of Minnesota? And that was two th uh, 1988 to 1990. Did you enjoy their winters? Oh, very much. <laughs> no other winter is better than this. Better than that. Uh, can you give us a more specific sense of the design of the disk and how you selected the key ingredients of the disk, like the soft underlayer, the ruthenium, uh, the diamond-like carbon lubricant, etc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the most important part is the core of magnetic media, which is cobalt chrome based, uh, cobalt platinum based. And we can put the additional stuff like a cobalt platinum chromium or some other materials to adjust it. But cobalt platinum is the core. And secondly, we have to make it the granular structure. And grain boundary was made by the oxide. That's, that's the breaking, wall breaking structure. The oxide was a taboo. Uh, oxygen was a taboo for uh, previous longitudinal media. But we put the oxide, oxide, and that would perfectly create the beautiful grain structure and, and the grain boundaries surrounding the cobalt platinum core magnetics. And that grain boundary of also include cobalt in small amount and controls the exchange coupling between grains. That helps the magnetization of the cobalt platinum stand very stiff and very stable uh, in the structure of the media. In order to have a better, a better crystal growth of the cobalt platinum, uh, we tried many materials as an under layer, a control layer, and we, we have found Ruthenium is the best to control the cobalt platinum uh, crystal growth control. And another challenge was a uh, soft underlayer underneath the materials to record uh, the bits. The soft underlayer is a part of the head which helps the right performance very much, but at the same time, the big volume of that soft magnetic underlayer is the source of the noise. So firstly, we have to eliminate the noise, which was uh, domains. And we tried multi-layers and we tried other stuff. In the experimental uh, process, we tried many, many layers uh, uh, as a structure. And finally, we have uh, reached a uh, very stable and uh, low noise structure as a, uh, as a uh, soft underlayer. It was, it was a cell thing, multi-layer. It was down to uh, 10 nanometer each, 
and uh, stack you know, tens of tens of uh, layers on it. But experimentally, it proves the domain can be removed. That's another proof of a concept. That, that was quite a breakthrough. Th where you, did you commercialize that as your uh, soft underlayer, or did you refine, simplify it before you went into manufacturing? Yeah, together with the manufacturer partner, uh, they are selecting the uh, simplest way to do, because uh, that might impact the cost of the manufacturing and the processes. Very good. Uh, can you summarize which were the most important R&D steps, research and development steps that led you to this success? Uh, you know, examples like proof of principle, prototyping, qualifying, etc. Mm -hmm. um, I I have four steps. It's a very important four steps. That is observation in physics, engineering, and most importantly, the philosophy to drive through it. So those are fundamental steps I have in my mind. And mm -hmm. observation is it's kind of listen the phenomena, listen to the phenomena of the nature, and find out the physics behind it. That is the observation and the physics. So once we find the physics, the how the nature works, then we bring the engineering to make it real. We don't fight physics. We have to live with the physics and bring the engineering to make it happen in realistic manner or practical manner. That's engineering. But we have many challenges. We hit many walls, our difficulties. Then we have to have a clear will, clear philosophy to break through it. So that's the very important steps of my research. Uh, probably not only clear, but very strong will, right? Surely. Yeah. Uh, what were some of the main challenges uh, that you faced during each phase of the hard disk draft program, the PMR program? Oh, yeah. Uh, there are many uh, challenges for me. Um, let's say, early phase, when we found the perpendicular recording, traditional perpendicular recording was not stable enough. And that was the right stability at first. And so we came back to the media design and the right process. And to f finally find out, we were lucky to find out something was wrong, which was the demagnetization after writing destroy newly written transitions over the media. And I remember that we had a bird's eye view. In the longitude recording, higher stereo density is the worst case. The longer wavelength recording is the best case. And perpendicular recording, we chased the high density recording, which is good, but we forgot the worst case. Now the phenomena, an observation of the phenomena told us, look at the worst case. That was a, a isolated transition was destroyed by the tail effect of the right head because media was not stable enough to resist the demagnetization field or disturbing the field. That is a, a very important uh, step uh, for us to work on. Then we focus on immediate with high nucleation field, which is very resistant to disturbing the field with uh, high anisotropic energy 
in grain structure as well. So that is the steps we had. And for integration, head has to be there on the media. And heads are another challenge for us. Uh, because we are not making heads by ourselves, especially in the right to heads, is a very complicated structure uh, in there. I, I remember I used uh, FIB, like a focused iron beam, to uh, you know, make the uh, perpendicular single pole head like rider, but it never successful. So we started collaboration with the head supplier, TDK, and that was a big change. Yeah, they're professionals. So that was uh, the first challenge for us to uh, get into the integration phase. Then you had to convince yourself that it was all stable, right? Uh, did, did you have to do some special testing or develop some special tests to uh, mm -hmm. confirm the stability? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, as usual, we test heads and the media and its combination on spin stand. It's a device level test. But this, this is not a good enough. So we start very early to integrate those devices into a hard disk drive system and bring it to a side-by-side -side comparison with LMR products, hard disk drive. So that is a very effective way for us to know the each features and the performances and also give us a great sense of buzz eye view of our entire system uh, that was a kind of exciting moment. Um, I, I introduced uh, our concept media, uh, cobalt platinum oxide concept media into the drive, as well as uh, uh, perpendicular recording heads in it, and make it stable structure. Then we tested in a, a wide variety of environment how strong, how weak. They, they experiment tell us a lot of information. Because LMR to PMR has a complementary relationship in terms of the direction of magnetization. As a result, drive itself has very related relationship, you know, the complementary relationship between two systems. And that observation gave us the directional guidance which we should chase, which should not chase. Among the many kinds of brick walls, we have the priority to work on. Don't fight physics, fight with engineering. So this is the uh, philosophy we had and that helped a lot. And even we expand the environmental range much farther, you know, beyond that hard disk drive specification. Then we found the severity of a PMR in temperature, the high temperature, low temperature, and even the spacing sensitivity was much better than longitudinal recording. That was uh, uh, impressive and surprising findings. I heard you once uh, comment about an RDT test. Was that a special test that you developed for, your team developed for testing the reliability? Or? Uh, RDT, uh, reliability demonstration test, is a normal procedure for products. Okay. So the point is, uh, we bring the prototype uh, PMR drive into the product level RDT test to check the reliability in uh, any behavior, the funny behavior found uh, in a prototype that has to be fixed. So that, that is the reason I, uh, we use the RDT uh, 
for a prototype and uh, reliability test. You mentioned that uh, uh, you had key collaborations with Showa for the medium and I think it was TDK mm -hmm. uh, for the head. Can you give us uh, a description of uh, those collaborations and examples of what went well and what didn't go so well? <laughs> yeah. Um, we have, Toshiba has a R and D uh, team and the capabilities, but it's a up, very upstream research. So we focus on the principles and proof of concept in a very limited uh, structure. And once we came out this great idea uh, of, of the concept of who ha which has to be proved, and we shake hands with partners, we kind of open uh, strategy to work on. And Showa uh, was chosen our primary uh, partner, and TDK was a partner for HATS. So we talked with them and make a very short uh, design in cycle route in the R research phase uh, together with them, uh, based on our proof of concept or uh, our principal proof of concept. Uh, can you give us roughly a sense of uh, how much time it took for the three partners to declare success, to achieve success? Yeah, actually uh, we started uh, the big project in year 2000. So, you remember we have completed the integration of a hard disk drive and announcement was made in the, uh, December in 2014. 2014. Uh, 2004, uh, 2004, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. And so we launched the first products in 2005. So actually it took uh, four years and a half and five years for the first commercial products at PMR. That's, uh, that's pretty good, I think. <laughs> pretty fast. I mean, four or five years is a long period in absolute terms, but for mm -hmm. breakthroughs like this, right. I think that was very good. Dr. Tanaka, can you share with us uh, how did you and Toshiba set the specific uh, goals for the first PMR hard disk drive? Uh, you know, how did you select the, what aerial density to do, what uh, drive capacity, reliability cost, etc.? How mm -hmm. did you set those targets? Um, in the prototyping, the platform was two and a half inch disk drive, which was our mainstream of the products. So in order for side-by-side -side comparison of LMR products and PMR prototype, the same platform uh, had to be used. That was, that was uh, very effective. And for uh, product or uh, product planning, we think twice, <laughs> actually, and uh, which products need more capacity. Of course, the higher is better for everything, but that was a year we are now increasing the volume of the products of 1.8 inch disk drive. That was the smallest disk drive at the time and capacity was not huge. So we thought if we could increase the capacity of 1.8 inch disk drive, our opportunity in the market or even creation with the market will be possible. Then we decided to integrate the first PMR products into 1.8 inch form factor and build a 40 megabyte, uh, I'm sorry, 40 gigabyte for single platter products and 80 gigabyte double platter products. So two of those are the first products uh, of the PMR, uh, the world first products of PMR. 
those were the products that were used, uh, I, I guess their predecessors in those products ended up being used in devices like the Apple iPod, right? As the portable music. media player yeah. uh, was the uh, one of the biggest. Well, probably uh, the market. biggest application. Yeah, as well as a PC, yeah. uh, thin PC, and video recorders. And so actually we you know, expand, uh, enhance the market creation uh, eventually. And the area density was 133 uh, gigabits per square inch, uh, which was uh, almost 30, 33% higher than the uh, state of the art longitudinal recording. And the reliability goal was to match uh, LMR or drives or? Reliability was better than LMR and even without reducing the flying height. Yes, yes. So it was uh, super. Where was this uh, first PMR hard disk drive produced? Uh, which factory produced it? Um, at the time that we had the three factory in main factory in the Philippines and the others in uh, Thailand and China and we started production uh, and also the small production line pilot line in Ome Tokyo so we started the pilot line in Tokyo and bring them into the other factories uh, I think we we covered this. Uh, who were the main customers? And mm -hmm. I think you said the portable audio player, PC, and video. Mm -hmm. cameras. Uh, yep. At the time, we uh, we have uh, we were focusing on the portable products: uh, notebook, PC, and portable media player, and a video recorder, and. Uh, car navigation systems, those are our focus. And so we uh, bring uh, enterprise products later uh, after acquiring Fujitsu hardware. Right? When did uh, Toshiba acquire Fujitsu? What was the time frame? And there was a uh, 2009. Yeah, I don't think Toshiba bought all of Fujitsu, just the disk drive operations. Disk drive of operations, Fujitsu. yes. Uh, I just want to make sure we didn't skip this. Uh, can you give us the, an example of the best success as well as the worst failure <laughs> along the way <laughs> in, in getting to the goal line? Uh, so best success, I would say, this is a, bring the new technology like a PMR uh, for you know, en enhancing the high density recording, you know, big capacity into a small body. And that enhances the market, new market, uh, up, up a portable media player and the video recorders. You know, our products bring the new generation or new fry, you know, uh, new world in, in the new emerging stuff. That'd be a fun. I think this was the uh, best success uh, together with the PMR. And the worst one, uh, that was in my research process. Uh, we were, studying uh, cobalt chromium traditional standard uh, 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 PMR media and we tested a variety of uh, features and the performances and the early days we have found spacing sensitivity is much worse than LMR what many people including me misunderstood that is fundamental feature of perpendicular recording, but was not. There was a misalignment of the proper design of PMR media magnetics 
and the right process. So I, I, I wrote a paper with these <laughs> features, but that was my worst case, <laughs> and the worst experience. But later, I wrote a new paper to validate the perpendicular recording is very spurred and the sensitivity, low sensitivity um, spacing in PMR. The, the trick was to have a high enough nucleation field. Right. And uh, I gather that uh, oxide media didn't have this problem. Mm -hmm. No. Right. Uh, can you give us a sense of the progress that has been achieved since 2005, uh, since the first introduction? Now we are just across the 10th anniversary. Oh, how, yeah. How, how did things go over the subsequent 10 years? Yeah, it's a happy anniversary. 10 years, 11 years. Uh, yeah. Uh, since then, uh, when we launched the first world well, first PMR drive at the 133 gigabits per square inch, the area density is now sixfold higher than the original PMR drive, and finally reached the one terabits per square inch. And in 10 years, it's in short time period, it's sixfold. And finally, it was a dream line of the area of density, one terabit per square inch. And our company is the first company to reach that area of density as a product. And also, they expand the uh, use cases of hard disk drive in a variety of fields. Uh, not only a small portable disk, but also mainstream of PC and uh, enterprise drives. So within four years or five years, all of the products of PMR, uh, uh, hard disk drive, switched to PMR from LMR. That was amazing speed. So by roughly after 2009, everything was PMR. PMR. Uh, can you give us a sense of today's uh, the hard disk drive market uh, measured in units? Uh. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the hardest market is uh, 400 million units plus, uh, depending on the year and the quarter. And Toshiba has a 18% share. It's about an 18% share currently. Okay. Uh, position number three. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your outlook for the future of PMR? Oh, yeah. The magnetic recording physics is still valid. And with the proper engineering, such as assisting energy for right process and uh, squeezed track widths by final risography process over the head or two-dimensional recording magics and um, advanced signal, re uh, signal processing technology, I think we can go farther. Uh, Very good. 